Now I'd like to show you something called the graphics path object. This is particularly good for drawing complex shapes. You can build a complex shape using sequences of connected lines known as figures. To use the graphics path object, I need to import a namespace first. It's not available straight away. Imports system.drawing.drawing2d. Let's draw a complex shape using the graphics path. So I'm not drawing lines yet, I'm adding lines to the graphics path object. I'm building up the shape first. Let's add a rectangle as well. And I need a pen. Well, I've already got one. Let's just change the colour. And now I'm going to draw that path out. I pass it a pen and I pass it a graphics path. Notice how my two horizontal lines are connected together. These lines and this shape are all part of the same graphics path. I can stop it from connecting the horizontal lines together by using the close figure method of the graphics path object, like this. Let's see the difference. Let's do something a little more complex. I've shown you that I can get the intersection of two rectangles, but I can't do that with circles. I can, however, do it with graphics paths. So let's this time get the intersection of two circles using graphics paths. First, I need a couple of graphics paths. GP1 and GP2. Now I'm going to add an ellipse to each of these graphics paths. Now, because the width and the height of these ellipses are the same, these are actually circles. I'm going to create a red brush and I'm going to use from ARGB to get the colour. A red brush will have a red value of 255, a green value of 0, and a blue value of 0. And let's have the green brush as well. Now let's fill those two paths, or should I say let's fill those two circles. That's the red circle, and that's the green circle. Now I'm going to create a region to hold the intersection of those two paths, in other words, the intersection of the two circles. And now I'm going to fill that region with a different colour. Let's see what we've got. Well, we've definitely got a hold of the overlap, but there's something not quite right here. Let's just double check the code. There's the problem. I've added both ellipses to the same graphics path. Let's take a look now. That's more like it. So what about three overlapping circles? I need a third graphics path. I'm going to add a third ellipse to that graphics path. I need a blue brush. And I'm going to fill in my third circle in the same way as I did the other two. Now at the moment I've got the intersection between the red and the green circles. What I need now is the intersection between the red and the blue circles. So let's do this in the same way. And we'll fill this intersection with purple. 
Let's take a look. It's on the way. So now I need to colour in the green-blue intersection. And we'll fill this with aqua. Take a moment to look at what I've done. I've set the region up as GP2. That's the green circle. Then I'm getting the intersection with GP3, namely the blue circle. And I'm putting that intersection back into the region. And I'm colouring it in with aqua. Let's take a look now. Almost there. I just need to deal with the intersection of all three circles now. I'll put the red circle inside that. I'll get the intersection of the red circle with the green circle. And then I'll get the intersection of that with the blue circle. And finally, I'll fill in that intersection. This time I'm going to use white. Let's see what we have this time. Three different coloured circles overlapping and I've coloured in the overlapping regions as well. This is well on the way to the colour mixing application that we're trying to build. Next time I'll show you how we can adjust the colours of these three circles at runtime and more importantly how we can adjust the colour of the overlapping regions.